Hello and welcome to today's video. My name is Joseph. I hope everyone's having a good new year so far. So I've been requested by Zine to create a video generating some basic NPC responses. After doing some playing this morning and the program kicking my ass a little bit, I'm dividing it into two bits. So the first part's actually going to be generating a conversation system and then the second part will be then linking those decisions back to NPC responses in a way. Um, before I start, you guys are awesome, you have no clue. Let's get into it. As a warning, this is going to be complicated <laughs> and I have to apologize a little bit. So I'm just going to show you the system first of all. So there's my NPC. If I click on my NPC, it gives me three options. Hello, can you help me, and goodbye. If I click on goodbye, it exits it, exits it. If I say hello, the NPC will ask me three, que well, two questions and I can say goodbye because I'm not interested. I need help, um, I'm not interested, so that would be me making a negative retort to the NPC if I was playing. So if I click on that, nothing happens. If I say goodbye, again, exits. Thank you so much, goodbye. Um, the next one is, can you help me? Yes, thank you so much, goodbye. So the way the system works is quite heavily designed into variable pass-through. So if I jump to my NPC and I'll show you guys my NPC first and explain how the chat mechanism works. So in here is a bunch of values and arrays. Uh, what was that key again? Nope. Nope. I've got to remember how to expand this again. I always forget the key. There it is. It's F8. Okay. So the way this works in essence is our major controller is the NPC chat controller. This keeps track of what status you've clicked on. This just checks to see if the chat is active or not, which is important because when I designed this this morning, I may have created a million chat entries by accident because I didn't check to see if it was flagged false or true. Always check your code. Um, so the way this works is I create a button ID and I retain that ID so I can reuse it later to control um, back and forth between a slave and... Um, master situation that makes my life a little easier in controlling aspects so the way this works and it's a little hard to visualize this is why i've got these numbers attached here so my first option so this is button one this is the one that's the highest button we'll say hello and if i click on hello my response will be entry one you can see here i've got a, te um, a text id array as well which also has one so basically, if I click on that, it will jump to my second stat, which is I need help. That will jump the chat of all the array entries here. So it doesn't only happen for the first array, but it controls all three arrays that are running at the same time. So for example, if I go, hello, I need help. Thank you very much. You can see it goes one, two, three, and then zero is goodbye, which should actually be that, which you can see jumps to 99, and 99 is my exit function. So 99, if 99 has ever appeared in the system, it jumps out of the chat and exits. And I've just chosen 99 on purpose because it's very out of the way, and I'm not going to really utilize it. I can reference it easily. So you can see in my second chat system here, I've got, can you help me? I'm not interested. And then two that are labeled with disable. And these are important because my system not only reads this ID, but can read the text too. And disabled means the button is disabled. So if I run the program quickly and show you guys again what happens, if I go, can you help me? See how I lose these two buttons? They're being flagged as disabled, so the system treats them as so. And I'll show you how I do that. So you can see here... It runs through the chat options and each of the chat options, again, you can see disabled doesn't matter because they're not being used, so I can leave them as zeros. But anything that has a response that needs to either go somewhere will always have an ID attached, as you can see zero again, like so. So that's the first step. That's not too bad. Then the second step is pretty straightforward. Again, I'm just using the same kind of stock standard mouse button check I use. So I don't have to use an instant. I check if my 
chat system is active. And then I create three sets of buttons. This is where things get a little mm, convoluted because this was the best I could think of at the time. I use an ID system for each to identify each of my arrays. As you can see, two are flagged as zero, one is flagged as ID. Don't have to technically write that, but for showing you guys what's going on, it's important. You can see here, I've got the ID. I snatch basically the ID of my button as I create it and I go through the process. I attach my array text, stuff like that. Which in theory, that is debunked code now. That does not need to be there. Sorry, I updated components. Like I said, this thing's kicked my ass a little bit this morning. Alrighty, what happened there? Okay. So basically that should pass through information like you like normal I'm just gonna make sure it doesn't crash beautiful and then I make sure my chat is active so then I can complete that step the last step here and this is done from the NPC perspective of as the controller rather than the option keys is I look at the NPC controller and basically I look at if my NPC is equal to 99 or my mouse is clicked right clicked so that allows me to exit my function. And then I destroy the keys. Instead of disabling them, I'm just being lazy here. You could disable them if you wanted to, but destroying doesn't isn't going to impede this too much. I then reset my controller chat. And obviously, because of this, what this is, you could actually jerry-rig it so it then points to a different um, chat set, for example. So, And then I disable the chat active. Now, this is where it's going to get a little bit more complicated. Under my NPC chat button, there is a lot of pass-through happening. And I'm going to show you guys, and I'm hoping it doesn't overwhelm you. I will put this in the Google Drive. So, under here, I've got the master IDs, 1, 2, and 3, which is fine. That's just what I use to siphon through which array set I'm using. So, this will be, in essence three repeats of the same code with just the ID sets, as you can see here, changed. So let's look at the first one. So the first set here, what this does is it does a couple of things and you can see they're quite lengthy and I don't even know if I'm gonna have enough space to show you in one go. So in my first step, I use master ID, which remember my NPC hands that over, so my button knows its master ID, and then it references the text array back in the NPC object by using the NPC chat count. Again, I have to reference master ID again to pull that information. And this says, is not disabled, proceed. If it's flagged as disabled, it disables this line of code, which is what we want. So you can use both the NPC chat in a controller and for example, text inside your button to allow you to have two options for disabling and making decisions on what your button should do. Next step is I just draw myself, which is fine. That's pretty stock standard code. Next, I draw text with color. This is where things get a little long because I center my text. So basically I take my width. I then re-reference my internalized code divide it by half, I do it again for my height there, divide it by half to center it. Then in here, my text chat, I basically again reference my NPC object and I pull my text information out of that dynamically. <coughs> and I set the color and the opacity. So the beauty of doing it that way is if I click on it, so here's my click function again, I can then re-reference back out to my object, as you can see, and pull my information back into my button here and display it dynamically, which means all I have to do is reference my master object. This does get quite lengthy, especially if you have long naming conventions like I do, because I, I'm a big believer in showing what my variables are doing so I know how to track them. And then if I scroll down, you'll see this is my second version of the function. Same thing, there is nothing different about what I've written in there. My third function is the same thing again, like so. 
So that's the first step to creating it. So the other part to this is I will get around to the next couple of days writing the next component. So if I jump back in here, you can see here, basically, if I wanted to change... Oh, sorry. No, I'm in the NPC. No, I'm, oh, I'm in the create. That's where I want to be. So I can change these functions here. So if I wanted to add another set of information, for example, all I would need to do is in here, I increase my array. So I change this array entry to three. This one has to become four. So here, for example, in step three, and this is where you have to be mindful. So if you say, thank you so much, you can say it's no prob, for example. Jump that to 90, oh sorry, jump that to four. So that now needs to go to procession four. In here, I need to make sure to mirror and update my arrays here. So this way, everything looks correct. So again, I'm gonna run that as a disable. Oh, look at that, I can run that as a disable. So you can see here, I'm just simply, oh, I the right number, updating the information like that. And if I run that now, I should have a fourth entry in the system. So hello, I need your help. Thank you so much. It's no prob, goodbye. So you can see there, it's quite dynamic in the way that you can expand and increase and add options. Like I said, the next part of this video I'll create will be the message boxes as well that come up from the NPC. Just try to make sure it's not too complicated for you guys because it can escalate, especially with stuff like this. Anyway, that's today's video. Thank you for watching. You guys are amazing. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.